Woo, don't you look like a breath of spring, and I'm dressed like winter. I nearly Good morning. Hey, y'all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hear the good news of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. When they were nearing Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany on Mount Olives, he sent off two of the disciples with instructions. Go to the village across from you. As soon as you enter, you'll find a colt tethered, one that has never yet been ridden, Untie it and bring it. If anyone asks, what are you doing? Say, the master needs him and will return him right away. They went and found a colt tied to a door at the street corner and untied it. Some of those standing there said, what are you doing untying that colt? The disciples replied exactly as Jesus had instructed them, and the people let them alone. They brought the colt to Jesus, spread their coats on it, and he mounted the people gave him a wonderful welcome, some throwing their coats on the street while others were spreading out rushes they had cut in the fields. Running ahead and following after, they were calling out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in God's name. Blessed the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. He entered Jerusalem, then entered the temple. He looked around, taking it all in, but by now it was late, so he went back to Bethany with the twelve. Would you please stand and join me in our call to worship this morning? We come to prepare for the holiest of weeks. We will journey through praise with joy on our lips. We will travel through betrayal and death, cradling hope deep in our hearts. Jesus leads us through this week, and we will follow, for he is the life we long for. He is the word who sustains us. Setting aside all power, glory, and might, he comes, modeling humility and obedience for all of us. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed, Blessed is the one who brings us the kingdom of God. Our hymn is 278. Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Lift your voices as we sing. Oh, 
Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children sing. Through pillared court and temple, the lovely anthem ring. To Jesus, who had blessed them, falls folded to his breast. The children sang their praises, the simplest and the best. From all of it they followed, with an exultant crowd. The victor palm branch waving and chanting clear and loud. The Lord of earth and heaven and chanting in state. No scorn that little children should on his bidding wait. Hosanna in the highest, that ancient song we sing. For Christ is our Redeemer, the Lord of heaven, our King. Oh, may we ever praise Him with heart and life and voice. And His blissful presence eternally Jesus, you have walked this road with us many times. Guide our steps and keep us close. Inspire our worship with your loving presence and work in our lives that your spirit may flow through our lives as we seek to help others walk their journey with you. Amen and amen. Welcome to Westminster United Methodist Church on Palm Sunday. Uh, Palm Sunday Palooza as we celebrate the triumphal entry of Jesus, our King, our Lord, our Savior, as he makes his way into Jerusalem to the table, to the cross, and to resurrection. This is the beginning of a week, a week of nine services in eight days, if you get the opportunity to participate in everything. But right now, we're starting with this Palooza. We're going to worship. We're going to have an Easter egg hunt for these kids that have joined us, and any kids at heart. And then we're going to have lunch together. Somewhere along the way, there's going to be a donkey that joins us outside, and we hope that you'll make your way out there and take a picture, maybe pet, maybe show some love, and let yourself be loved by Jesus this day. As we come together. Before we continue, make sure you know the folks beside you. Make sure you know. Come on, turn around, turn around. And I invite you to take a seat. Kids are returning to their families. If you by chance adopt a kid and not get to the right family, please just take them in and love them today. It's good. Our responsive psalm this morning is the text of Psalm 118. And interspersed with that, we'll use the verses of all glory, loud, and honor. So we begin with singing, then I'll share some, we'll sing, I'll share, and we'll sing again. So this is uh, all glory, loud, and honor. Thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. 
Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. A glory, loud and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children their sweet hosannas ring. The company of angels are praising thee on high. Name comes the King and Blessed One. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God, I will extol you. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. you join together in this prayer of confession and yearning this morning? Holy One, humble us as we come to you in prayer. Uncover the mask that obscure our vision and keep us from facing our true selves. Hold us close in our weakness that we may find the courage to lean on your grace and rest in your forgiveness. Bless us with humility, love, and mercy that we may be merciful, humble, and loving to everyone we meet, even ourselves. Amen. God's face of love shine upon us. Christ's eyes of forgiveness gaze upon our souls with mercy and compassion. The Spirit's sustenance offers us grace and hope that we may rise and walk forth in joy. Amen. Be the face of love for your neighbor. Sometimes that's the best we can do, folks. This world sometimes it has its eyes shut off to the ways of heaven. They can't see Jesus that stands right before them. You and I have to be that Jesus as we offer forgiveness. So this morning, share smiles of compassion and words of peace as we greet one another on this day, passing the peace of Christ. Invite our kids to come down. <laughs> it's all good. Good morning, friends. Good morning, friends. Good morning, friends. Y'all have a seat up here. Find a seat somehow. Push, sit on some coats. 
Huh? Send them some coats. There you go. I need a coat. Here's a coat. Nice big coat. Oh, hey. Hey, friend. <laughs> All right. So thank you all for helping out with the procession this morning. You wave palms, right? That was fun. That was fun. And now you're sitting on cloaks or sitting on coats, right? Well, some of you are. These are coats that folks brought in this morning. Thank you very much for bringing these in. Why would we have coats out here? Huh? Well, it is cold outside. It's cold outside. But you're not wearing these coats right now. They're on the altar. Oh, yeah. Oh, you want to sit? Go sit with Kate. Kate, you're going to have to come up here. <laughs> Kate, come on. Come on, Jackson. Come sit with Kate. There she goes. All right, see, I know that would work. So we have these coats because actually the other part of the palm processional in Mark's gospel says they took their coats and some were put upon the colt that Jesus rode and others were placed on the ground as he walked in to Jerusalem. So actually what you're doing and what you're seeing here is actually just a play on the scriptures. They told him, they, you know, they took their cloaks and they laid them down. It gave Jesus a soft place to be. Have anybody tried to ever ride a horse? Yeah, or a pony? I have, I have pony you have a pony at home. We're at your house after lunch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, if you, you have a saddle. Yeah, that saddle allows you to see, you know, sit properly. There's usually a blanket that goes under there to give some cushion. I mean, so the colt or the donkey, depending on which scripture you read, Jesus sits on the coats. It protects, gives Jesus a soft place to sit, and it protects the donkey's butt. You put them on the ground because you want to show honor. And so by sharing all these cloaks today, we are sharing honor and worship with God. Now, we're not going to ride these out of here. We're not trying to give us off place to land. But all these cloaks are going to go to folks to help make sure they stay warm when it's cold outside. Right? There are too many people in our neighborhoods that when it gets cold, they don't have anything to keep them warm. You probably go to school with people that don't have a sweatshirt to stay warm in the cold classroom. You probably have folks that come to school in the wintertime shaking because they don't have proper clothing. So we're going to take all these cloaks. Some are going to go to a men's place to make sure the men have coats. Some are going to a women's place to make sure women have coats. And all those that are sized for kids are going to go to a place to make sure kids have coats to wear and stay warm. So this is a sign of worship, a way to honor God, and it's also a way we help others. Because the best way we can worship is to show our love for our neighbor. All right, let's pray. Dear God. Thank you for coming to us, showing us how to love, and giving us the assignment to love others. Accept our gifts, our worship to you, and a sign of love for our neighbor. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Miss Angie's going to lead you guys on out, and later on I'll see you around the donkey. Good morning. Hear the word of the Lord from the prophet Isaiah. The master God has given me a well-taught tongue, so I, so I know how to encourage tired people. He wakes me up in the morning, wakes me up, opens my ears to listen as one is, to take or, as one is ready to take orders. The master God opened my ears. I didn't go back to sleep. I didn't pull the covers over, back over my head. I followed orders. Stood there and took it while they beat me. Held steady while they pulled me out of my beard. Didn't dodge their insults. Faced them as they spit in my face. And Master God stays right there and helps me so I am not disgraced. Therefore, I set my face like flint, confident that that I'll never regret this. My champion is right here. Let's take our stand together. Who dares bring suit against me? Let Let him try. Look, 
the master God is right here. Who would dare call me guilty? From Paul's letter to the Philippians, the second chapter. Think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. He had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privilege of, of deity and took on the statutes of a slave. He became human. Having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death. And the worst kind of death at that, a crucifixion. Because of that obedience, God lifted him high and honored him far beyond anyone or anything ever so that all created beings in heaven and on earth even those long ago dead and buried will bow and worship before this Jesus Christ and call out in praise that he is the master of all to the glorious honor of God the Father. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Oh, holy God, as you have entered into this world, humbly into our lives, we pray with grace that you'll transform us, that you'll welcome us home, and that we will readily take the assignments given and be a servant as you first served us. Let your love flow into us that we can share it with all those around. We pray that in Jesus' name. All who are agreed said, Amen. 
The idea of Palm Sunday's parades always take me back to life with my grandfather. Pop was a parade lover. Some of that came just from the era of life when the parades of the town and the festivals were the only thing that you could really get up for because there wasn't TV and baseball and all these pro sports, especially in the southeast down in Wilmington in the area to go to. A proud veteran, he, he liked to make sure you saw the, the, the military exploits come through and, and shine. As a former Shriner, he loved to see those guys come and bring all their characters and all the crazy activities I might do with little cars run around. He took us to every parade possible. Later on in life, I, I got a chance to be in a parade. It wasn't too, too late in life, I should say. It was when I was still in, uh, a young teenager. Uh, my friend's dad uh, owned a radio station, WMFD in Wilmington. He managed that station, at least. And he decided it would be a great advertisement if he could get as many kids as possible to come be part of a marching boombox marching band. You know those old boomboxes? You know, you know, we see them now, and we're like, oh, those things are ancient. But every one of us just told to bring a boombox, set it on 680 WMFD, and they would just play music and advertisements as we marched the three-mile route of the parade. We had T-shirts. We had shorts. We thought we were being cool. Later on, we thought it was really dorky. That led to a life of being in the marching band for over uh, seven years between high school and life at state. Uh, many a parade, and you could often find us there all sorts of hours because you got there early and you always stayed late. Then there was a year, a few years ago, I got to go into a small town parade where I served. These two guys had taken one of those Shriner cars that I mentioned. They had decided they were going to take an old one that had been beaten up and torn down, and they rebuilt it and refurbished it. So they said, hey, we're too old to do this. Will you do this? I was at least half their age at the time. So I was like, yeah, sure, I'll try to drive that thing. I got some practice runs in, and we got it. You know, We drove it up to the starting line where we could wait in line and get going. And when they said, hey, time to start moving, the folks in front of us started moving, and this rehab car shut off. We never got off the line that day. Brains are interesting. They have all sorts of assignments. The Grand Marshal, of course, is the one up front. Uh, they always get some kind of nice car or carriage or some, you know, big pomp and circumstance to go around he or she. Uh, then there's always at the end something. I grew up in Wilmington with the Isaiah Parade. That was the Queen's float. She was always going to make her arrival at that point in time. Uh, of course, in holiday parades at Thanksgiving and Christmas, who's going to be at the end of the line? Santa Claus. Maybe Mrs. Claus, too. Just depends on you know, what she's got going on at that point in time. But, you, you know, in the lineup of a parade and the assignments, you never want to be too close to the first responders. Because if you got a fire truck and an ambulance and a police car all up there, guess what they're going to want to do? Make a lot of noise. Just run those sirens as much as they can. And if you got anything around them, you're going to be deaf. You also don't ever want to have to follow the animals in a parade. But somebody's got to clean up all that mess. It's their assignment. It might be humbling, it might be dirty, but it's their assignment to go through the parade and to clean up all the mess. There are two parades that happen on Palm Sunday. We have the one we have in Scripture. All the Gospels give us a little variation on that parade, but Jesus comes in humbly into the crowd. They shout, Hosanna. And some he's riding a donkey, and some, some he's riding a colt. Some, they're both animals present. We're not sure which one he's on. But it's a humble kind of parade. History tells us there's another parade that day. That's the parade of Pontius Pilate. It's an imperial entry. It has all the pomp and circumstance of Rome that comes in with their soldiers, and uh, Pontius Pilate gets to ride a litter. Now, a litter in this point in time is a royal litter. They're carrying him on a bed. And the soldiers are lifting it up and make sure he has his ease. Jesus got a donkey lined with coats. And, and the parade route wasn't filled with soldiers with their arms ready at attention. It was filled with a crowd who shouted Hosanna and waved palm branches. Jesus' parade highlights everything good that we might expect about the way of heaven. It is humility. Nothing big, no pomp and circumstance. A donkey, not even a you know, large horse. 
In fact, it says in Mark's gospel, a colt, unbroken, untamed, not even ready. And it also talks about offering. We brought coats today. It really is a play on the gospel to make an offering to our Lord to show that, you know what, we're going to live out this gospel. Early in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, you know, they were asking what to do, and they said, if you got one coat, if you got two coats, you only need one, so give one away. And our Wednesday night group, as we talked about simplifying life, we said, wouldn't it be nice? And we just said, you know what, we don't really need all the coats we have. I'll be flat out honest with you, I got more than I need. But we don't need that much. So let's give one away. Some of you brought in stacks of coats, and you see that this morning an offering for our Lord. And they shouted Hosanna, which truly means save us. Save us now. But there's another part of that story that I want to draw on today that has just stood out to me as I uh, read this week and spent some time in the upper room disciplines as uh, you're invited to share as well. As Jesus got ready for this parade, he sent two disciples off and he sent them off with an instruction. Go get me a colt. Now consider these two unnamed disciples. We don't know which of the 12 they are. They walked with Jesus throughout Israel. They had gone from the shores of Galilee. They may have been the ones that went up on the Mount of Transfiguration. So they have climbed hills as well. All this walking and now Jesus wants a colt. They've come to Jerusalem thinking they're coming in just for the wonder of Passover. A great time of sharing a meal together and remembering all of God's saving acts. But they've also got in the back of their mind that Jesus has started talking about this prophetic idea that he's going to have to die and rise again. I'm not sure if there's confusion going on. I don't know what's wrestling with their emotions. But, you know, all of a sudden, you know, they're coming into this parade. They've got this idea, hey, this is to be Passover. Jesus is talking about we're going to die. We'd like some clarity. Jesus says, go get me a colt. Doesn't offer them the plan for what's happening next. Doesn't offer them the comfort, uncertainty of what's going to go on. Just says, here's your assignment. Pastor, it's supposed to be a, a time of remembrance. There's a great ordered meal that goes through the life of Scripture that's still practiced today in, in many communities as they remember God's choosing the Israelites and saving them from the slavery, death, and sin at the hands of Pharaoh. And Jesus is up here talking about death and resurrection. Disciples looking for an annual celebration, remembrance, and a good meal got to come about and talk about death planning. I even talked to somebody this week that said, you know, every time I talk to my children about death planning just because I want to get everything in order, nothing's wrong with me, they kind of go, no, we don't want to do that. The disciples didn't want to do it either. In Luke's gospel, the transfiguration story precedes Jesus' coming into Jerusalem. It's that story where God anoints again his beloved as he turns his face towards Jerusalem. Luke offers, as that story continues out, a recentering as we focus on the mission of Christ, what it means to follow Jesus. Hear these words from Luke 9. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But that man said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at home. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Following is mission-focused. And it comes with work as we serve our Lord. Will Willeman, writing for the Upper Room Disciplines this week, had some tons of great pointed comments. And it was Tuesday that, as I read, he offered some comforting words uh, for, from Jesus as on his way to the cross. 
In fact, he offered this little anecdotal story uh, of a time he had been preaching at a church, and a woman came up following worship. Now, we as preachers, when we go out, we always kind of get weird, kind of strange comments. Oh, that was nice. Such a good service today. That's kind of common. It's kind of interesting because the work of the service is really on us. It's called a liturgy, the work of the people. Well, this woman came up to Willowman following the service and said, You know, I've had a hellish week. And I came this morning seeking comfort and reassurance. Willowman says he responded, Well, I hope my sermon was helpful. And she responded to him, Not particularly. I came here seeking comfort only to have Jesus give me an assignment. Wow. We come seeking comfort. And Jesus says, come follow me. Come serve me. I didn't have a place to lay my head. You ain't got time to bury your dead. We ain't got time for you to go back home and say goodbye. We've got to go proclaim the mission and the kingdom of God. The comfort of our salvation, friends, is we get to participate in life everlasting with Jesus. We have too often tried to sign up saying, hey, we want to make sure we have eternal life. Can I make sure I get to heaven? And Jesus keeps on coming back and saying, come follow me. There's a new way to live that you can experience that right now. No, I just want the fire insurance policy. Can I just get my ticket and make sure I get there? Come follow me. Sell everything you got. I got a new way for you to live. We keep on coming back to Jesus thinking we're going to get our eternal life. And Jesus just goes on saying, come experience it now. Jesus never said it would be easy. He just said my burden is going to be light. As you take on my yoke of obedience and walk with me. He also came back and said, you know what? We're not going to be free of suffering. In fact, he flat out told us that if you come live in my name, they're going to persecute you. Your life can get to hate you just because you want to follow me. It's that guilty by association thing. There are Christ hymn of Philippians 2, which I read a few moments ago, cuts off at an interesting point that I think we need to examine this morning. If you go on in Philippians chapter 2 and begin in verse 12, you hear these words. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, Not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence. Work on your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all these things without murmuring and arguing, so that you may be blameless and innocent. Children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, in which you shine like stars in the world holding forth the word of life so that I can boast on the day of Christ that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. We get an assignment to serve our Lord. And like Paul, a suffering servant, we are called to do it without murmuring and arguing and with readiness and cheer. You know, I think about the service that I am called to for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It may seem that my life is of calling is to sit up here as a preacher and do the bidding of the church. But the first call is to be a disciple. The first call is to come live a life with Jesus that walks humbly, chooses wisely, shows love of God and neighbor. That first calling is not always pleased by the church. Because it takes you to places that are not exactly the cozy, comfortable confines of a sanctuary. And puts you in the messiness of this world, making relationships with people that are broken, that have gone through great hardship. And that Jesus said, hey, these are your new friends. You'd have never hung out with them unless it was because of me. But because of me, these are the people that you're assigned to. And so that call of service takes you to all sorts of situations. Sometimes the world hates you for it. Sometimes the church hates you for it. But it is the burden we carry as we take our assignment as disciples and serve our Lord. On this Palm Sunday, 
I invite you to remember Christ's humble entry into the world and into our lives. Christ did not come to you with a sword or gun, a bat. He came to you with holes in his hands and a heart that bled out for you and said, I love you. And then he invited you to come follow him, not into an easy life, but a new way of life. A life that we will suffer, but in our death we will rise again with Christ. And he came and said, come partner with me in this work. We have to work out our salvation. It is not a ticket you purchase. It is a life you live. And there are twists and turns along the way. There's hardship. There is joy. But it is work. As we accept the assignment to follow Jesus. And to serve him as we love our neighbor. I invite you to accept that assignment that you're being called to. To serve. So you can see the fullness of life in Christ as you work out your salvation. As we sing this morning, we're singing an old soulful song, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, because we need the hand of the Lord to walk us through this life. We cannot go on our own, but Jesus said, you don't go alone, for I am always with you. As you wish to respond to the call to service, sing, pray in your seat, come find a spot with the coats. But if you feel the call, the call to serve in any way, let God know your plan and respond to him. I will follow you. Let us stand and sing, precious Lord, take my hand. Affirm our faith with the words of an Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will judge living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We are people of prayer. We seek communication with God. Sometimes we limit our prayers to just petitions saying, God, help us, help them. But we also need to make those petitions to be strengthened, to be weak. If we're going to be followers of Jesus, we need to trust in God's strength to get us through, to walk with us each and every day. And as we pray the Lord's Prayer, we remember we pray for daily bread because what we need can only be provided by God. So as we pray today, you'll see in our bulletin, we keep an active prayer list of those who are going through trials and tribulations, those who are sick acutely and chronically. Sometimes there are prayer celebrations there. Pray over those names. God knows what's going on. We don't share all those details because sometimes people don't want them shared. And look right beside you because right now I can promise you the person sitting closest to you that is not your spouse or not your family is likely going, something, going through something they haven't shared openly. So just pray God's hand touch them. If it's time to celebrate with joy, God will help them lift that up. If they're falling apart, God's going to be able to surround them with your care and your love without you knowing that you've done anything good, but God will know. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we're sometimes caught between joy and despair. And we yearn for the fulfillment of your desire beyond the brokenness and neediness of this life. So we offer thanksgiving for God's, your presence with us. And we offer petitions in our heart for the transformation of the church and the world. We also lift up to you those whom we love and those strangers that we have not even met, those who go through sickness and illness that need the healing touch of the great physician, but also need the understanding that the great physician heals in ways that are beyond our understanding. They may walk and be renewed right here on the face of this earth. They may be healed in a way that lets them live that eternal life in ways we don't understand or comprehend. We pray for those who are battling trials and tribulations at work and at play and at home. We pray for those who are discerning what's next in life, school, retirement, a new job, a new place. We pray for those who have seen their hopes and dreams go a little differently. What we know, though, is through all of it, Christ is with us. And we are not alone. The biggest dream is that we have a life with Christ. Flourishing and fulfilling as we serve. So Christ, hear our prayer. Life giver, pain bearer, love maker. Day by day you sustain the weary with your word and gently encourage us to place our trust in you. Awaken us to the suffering of those around us. Save us from hiding the denials or taunts that deepen the hurt. And give us grace to share one another's burdens in humble service. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, and forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You've already given a great gift with your presence, 
and these awesome cloaks. Again, they are going to be uh, distributed among three places that we know of, Hope Restorations, uh, Restored Hope, and SAFE, which is a domestic violence uh, agency in our community. Um, they have a need for kids' coats. So they'll all be distributed in different spots. If there are others left, they will also go to, go to places of good need or places they can be resold and the money uh, put into places of need. So thank you for those gifts as you're offering today as well. We now worship God with our tithes and our offerings. Almighty and everlasting God, as we bring our gifts and lay them at your altar, we remember the crowns in Jerusalem who laid their cloaks on the road, shouting Hosanna as Jesus passed. We know they were looking for a Messiah who was different from you, different from the Jesus that you sent us, not one of political power and might, but one who came in compassion and mercy to heal, love, and save. Search our hearts that we might be confident that the Messiah for whom we long is the one you know we need. Jesus Christ, your anointed one, the one we pray now. Amen. Quickly, before we sing our last hymn, I'll give what's happening afterwards as part of the benediction, but a reminder, we're turning a little bit differently. Palm Sunday is a great celebration, but we always end Palm Sunday with a little hint of what is to come. Because if all you do is get Palm Sunday and Easter, you miss the fact that we have to go through Good Friday. Jesus' walk to the cross is not one that just happened. It happens with daily events. And then, of course, we have the big events of the Last Supper and then Good Friday. Our community is privileged to have an association of congregations who has daily worship planned Monday through Thursday. You see a slide before you giving all the locations and the preachers. Uh, for the week. Each, each worship will be 30 minutes in length, followed by lunch. Lunch this year is the same menu every day of soup and sandwich and some kind of dessert. Uh, so come out for the fellowship. Please stay. Uh, one of the critiques of the past has been people just come and they have grabbed lunch and go. So the idea of having soup and sandwich every day is that we can sit down and break bread together. Thursday night, we'll worship in this congregation at 7 as a, a time of remembering Jesus' Last Supper with his friends. We'll celebrate Holy Communion. Friday, uh, some of our area United Methodist pastors from Queen Street, LaGrange Institute, and Trinity 
will join me as we retell the Good Friday story and the passion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then next Sunday, we've got two worship services. First at 7, as we'll hopefully be in the garden this year. Weather prediction already, Linwood has said, is favorable. Uh, and so we'll be in the garden at 7, and then we'll go in the fellowship hall for breakfast. If it does rain, we've got the fellowship hall. So just we'll scoot right in, come as we celebrate the empty tomb. And then at 10 o'clock next Sunday, we'll be right back here in the sanctuary with a full festive uh, Easter celebration as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. It's a great week ahead. Invite folks out. You know, there are a lot of folks who don't go to Easter uh, services simply because no one said, come with me. And we don't need to be inviting people to churches. We need to be inviting people into a relationship with Jesus. We're called to make disciples, not church members. But Easter's a great time to come celebrate the resurrection and begin that journey of walking with Christ. Our closing hymn this morning is, We sang our loud hosannas. Lift your voices as we sing. getting ready to have some festivities, so let me give you some instructions so that we don't have total chaos. All right? So, let's get the good one out of the way for the kids first. Following worship, we'll have an Easter egg hunt in the garden. Uh, to give them instructions to make sure they're all ready, we're going to ask all the kids and their families that are participating in the Easter egg hunt to come up here, hang out by the pulpit, Angie will come down and tell you how we're going to get this thing underway. Okay? There's candy in those eggs, some toys in those eggs, so parents and grandparents and family folks, make sure that when the kid gets the egg and if they have any allergies, make sure you make sure you know what's in there and it's safe for them to take in. Last thing we need is some peanut allergy to go bazonkers and us have problems. Uh, for those that want to have their picture and fall in love with Pretty Girl the Donkey, we're going to open those doors right there uh, to Westminster Lane. You can go out. Angie, we got donkey set up over here. Donkey's going to be over here to my right. Uh, you can go out there immediately and get that taken care of, uh, and that way you can move on to that way. 
For those that don't want to be egg hunting and those that don't want to picture with a donkey and they're saying, you know what, I'm getting first in line. <laughs> you can head out these doors to the left down to the fellowship hall and go right to eat. But I promise you this, if you don't say something for those kids, they're going to come eat off your plate. All right? Everybody got that? Everybody good? If you're good, say amen. amen. All right. I love it. Thank you, Noah. Friends, uh, it is time for us to depart, so receive this benediction. Go walk with Christ. Let him save you, not with a ticket, but a new life as you work out your salvation, serving God and serving neighbors. Go now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.